This tutorial is for a swirl cup and showing you how I do that. I start off by mixing epoxy and letting it set just a little bit and then applying it directly to my stainless steel. At this point I had already done most of the cup but I it takes a while so I didn't want to make you guys sit and watch that. So I just apply a very thin coat, just enough to cover it, and you want to make sure that you cover completely from the tape to end, one end to the other. If you're doing a full coverage, then you wouldn't need tape. Um, for me, I actually used my tape to guide my swirls. As you can see, I have shapes and different colors marked on my tape, and I wanted to have it to where I have for each color, I have two swirls of that same color. So how I actually marked my tape was I put a mark at the top and the, and the bottom of the same shape so that I knew I started on one and I ended on the other. So I did the same shape, like if I did a square, I would do a square on the left, a square on the right, and then I would turn the cup 180. So I'm exactly opposite of where I had previously marked it and then I marked the cup with the exact same shapes. And then I just kind of turned my cup as I did that and made sure that I could fit all of the ones that I wanted. For this cup I had, I think five or six colors. So I just went along and kind of spaced them out so that where I would start, I would end on the one on the base, on the bottom side. And when I apply my glitter, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about a little bit more. And what I was showing you there was just that I stick my um, actual brush into alcohol, but I really haven't been able to get my brushes clean. So I generally we will either apply it with um, a brush and then just throw it away, or I'll apply it with a sponge brush, or even my gloved finger, um, whatever I find is easiest at the time. And also just a side note, when you apply your uh, epoxy to your cup you can mix your epoxy really quickly it doesn't matter because your your it doesn't matter if there's bubbles in your epoxy it'll kind of smooth out as you let it sit so as you can see here i'm taking my first color and i'm starting it at the one left side on the mark so that blue mark is where I started it and I ended it on the other 180 side on my blue mark. Now, if you don't have a taped cup, you can use tape inside your cup. And that's kind of how I did another one that was a full coverage one. I just kind of put taped marks inside my cup. So at least I knew where I was starting and ending based on the tape on the left hand side it worked out just fine that way as well. You don't have to have it on both ends. And I'm just using a little measuring spoon to shake it, and that way it's a little bit more precise than using your actual shaker bottles. You have more control over it. And I also am using it on my hand turner instead of having it on my rotisserie and I'm doing that because I have more control hand turning it than I do on my rotisserie where it's just constantly going. Um, I know a lot of people do it on their rotisseries and that's perfectly fine but for me this was one of the first times that I had done a swirl cup and I just feel personally that I have more control over where I'm applying my glitter if I apply it on my hand turner because I can just turn it where I want it and um, put the actual glitter where I want it. And as you apply your next color and your following colors, you're gonna kinda blend it, your second color in with your first color. So as you can see, when I'm applying the second color, I'm just kinda sprinkling it over the first and then extending it just a little bit further up. So that way, as I keep applying my next colors, I'm gonna keep doing that and I'm gonna try to make them as even as possible. Um, sometimes you will have some areas that you just need to fill in a little bit more or that don't end up perfect, perfect as far as the width of your stripes. And 
I mean, some people prefer to have just kind of different um, shape stripes and not all the same, but if you want them to be all the same, you can do that as well. But I just kind of did a little bit and then kind of filled it in if I needed to. Mainly, I was just wanting to make sure that I got a good amount of each color so that it wasn't um, a ton of one and then hardly any of another. So that's kind of why I spaced out my lines the way I did so that I could see that and see where it was at for the other color and doing like the 180 so you have two stripes of each color. And on this one, I used two browns that were fairly similar, so it's it was almost hard to tell them apart very much, but um, I still, like, after I get done doing one color, then I kind of go back in with the other colors and fill back in, because as your epoxy soaks up your glitter, you will have some areas that look a little bit flat, and depending upon the style and the look that you're going for, um, I, I tend to like to keep applying the glitter so that it doesn't have that flat look, but some people do prefer the flat look. So it's, it's either way, it's whatever you prefer. Um, but for me, I usually go back in and just, um, add more glitter in those areas to make sure that they're completely covered. And also that helps with making sure that your stainless steel doesn't show through as much too. If you keep adding the glitter, it'll continue to get that coverage that you want. And this cup, it was a kind of a camo-ish cup. Um, the person that I was doing it for won my raffle that I had on my site, um, on my Minderella Creations site. And, um, well, Facebook page. I don't have a website, but I have a Facebook page. And so she won a swirl cup. And she's a country girl. And she wanted something with kind of rose golds and browns and stuff in it. So... Um, I was going for just kind of a camo-ish look and so I included the rose golds and the browns and then um, I did include one that was kind of greenish and it has a little bit of shimmer um, in kind of a blue so it just added a little bit extra to the cup but I really liked how all the colors blended and how it ended up looking pretty cool with the color um, combination and then I actually used the extra glitter that had fallen off and made earrings with it and they were really pretty.
I immediately pulled the tape after I got done glittering and this is what the cup looks like and then I did let my cup cure overnight prior to adding epoxy. The next cup that I did was a rainbow swirl, and I did this one in the same way. I put markings on my tape, and I applied the glitter. The runoff glitter was beautiful, and um, I did this on stainless, and if you want your colors more vibrant, you can do it on a white base. Since these were swirls, I did seal these, and I have other videos where I show how I seal it but I sealed them and then I applied the epoxy on both of these and then I let them cure for approximately 12 to 24 hours once that was applied. Hey guys, I just wanted to make a note about the swirl cups. Um, the steps that you have seen so far were the glittering, so you epoxy glitter and then I, you saw me epoxy over the glitter cups after they were sealed. The steps that I left out were I did um, let them cure about 12 to 24 hours and then I did apply the decals. Um, there were, I think I was able to just apply it directly on both of them because they did have enough that I could just sand down. So you only wet sand on epoxy. Don't sand down your glitter because it can change the color of it. So. Um, I did wet sand on my epoxy just to make sure that I had a smooth surface and then I applied um, the decals to my smooth epoxy. Then I went back after, I think I just applied it directly after that. So it was immediately I was applying my uh, final seal coat of epoxy. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Drop any questions in the comments.